Hello, thank you for joining us for the most recent of our work study primer series. Today we'll be discussing developing and promoting students. As always, we're starting off the presentation by quickly reviewing the supervisor resource page. You can find this by simply googling UNC work study and then clicking the current supervisor link in the middle of the page. You'll find these resources including all of the trainings from this year on that page under the training section. Today's on developing and promoting students, as you can see, is not quite up on the side as we're still recording it, but we'll be there shortly. So I'd like to begin by talking about the actual and ideal goals of the program. Uh, this information is based on the FWS annual surveys conducted over the last couple years, uh, as well as information provided during our site visits. So when we've talked to students and supervisors in the program and asked them what do they actually feel that their goals are in participating, um, supervisors normally come back with the same three themes. First and foremost, they're looking to have someone there to help with the duties. Um, they need students to help complete the tasks set out for their office or department or research lab. Um, secondly, they're looking to do a little what we call duty conversion, which is sort of offloading the responsibilities of the supervisor to the students and in that way freeing up more time for our supervisors who quite often um, have more work than they can accomplish in their work weeks. And then third, this one's less prevalent than the first two, but we do see it fairly often in our responses, uh, is that a lot of supervisors are looking to provide uh, professional development or mentoring or some sort of skills growth to the students employed in the positions they supervise, um, often as a way of giving back or because the supervisors were in turn part of the program back in their time in college. Uh, but regardless, these are the three large trends we see amongst supervisors. For students, it's a slightly different set of priorities. Um, they are pretty well divided between seeking out experience through the program and pay. Understandable since the work-study program is, after all, a source of financial aid. Uh, but again, very consistently you see this theme of need for professional development or desire to grow um, as a future professional in an area uh, using the work-study program as a platform. Now, these lists are, are inherently not bad or good, they simply are, um, but they do differ slightly from the ideals that we would like to see looking at the program from a programmatic perspective, if you will. Um, on the supervisor side, what we'd really like to see is the, the mentoring, the professional development, the uh, drive to help better that student as a primary goal. And we realize this isn't necessarily uh, the goal of the supervisor, but as, if you'll stick with me into the next slide, you can see how the actual and the ideal goals do line up if we look at this from a slightly different perspective. Um, after the development, we would like to see the duty conversion, same as the supervisor, offloading some of the responsibilities from the supervisor to the student. And of course, we do want to see these opportunities exist for students, uh, the opportunity for students to, to learn and grow and do the work. So staffing power is definitely one of the goals of the program. Um, on a student perspective, what we'd like to see students saying is first and foremost that they're looking for the professional development these positions provide, skills growth, opportunities, networking, the ability to uh, get a first glimpse into a future career or at least career area. Uh, and then we'd like to see the experience that comes along with that and of course pay being less of a motivating factor so that students are concerned not just about getting paid for their time but about the skills and the intangible benefits that come along with that pay. Now. I realize that previous bit of information does seem a bit cookie because people in the program from a supervisory level are here because they need students to help them in the performance of their duties. Um, but I'd like to explain why we feel that that ideal list is the priority set. Um, as you can read on the screen before you, there's this concept in the work study program that by not just employing students, but developing students, you increase the capacity for both the quality and the amount of work that students can perform, um, as well as bettering that student in their, their skills, their professional abilities. And what this does is it increases the value of a student uh, and the value that that student presents to their employer. So in combination, by training the student, by providing professional development, by helping them grow, they gain additional capacity for taking on more skilled work, higher level work, and more quantities of work, 
which frees up more of the supervisor's time, which lets the supervisor provide more training and development for the student, and you wind up with this upward development spiral, um, training students who come in and instead of simply just doing work, uh, learning some skills, learning some abilities, growing, it creates a, a sort of cycle that helps out both the supervisor and the student. So the question at this point becomes, how do I become part of this process? How do I have students who are growing and developing and able to take on more and do more so that I can have a more productive office, um, better students, better use of my time, of their time, uh, and overall better experience for everyone involved? Um, and we have, again, through site visits, through our annual survey, um, through discussing these questions with students and supervisors, come up with uh, a set of options of, that we'll talk about over the next few minutes. Um, how both we recommend, based on research, based on policies at other universities, uh, that you go about developing your students, and based on the actual responses of the people we've talked to in the program. So. You can look at this in a few different ways. You can talk about skill development. These are concepts and opportunities by which students are focused just on growing their skills from a very deliberate perspective. Um, there are a number of resources that you could tie into. Obviously, there's workshops both here and abroad. There's online opportunities that uh, provide either hands-on training or conceptual training through things like webinars or videos. Um, there's reading materials, um, but there's also this opportunity to work with other students, either in the same position or in related positions, or even cross-training with graduate students, professional team members, um, giving the students in the work-study program to observe how work is done by other people in your or workspace or a related workspace. Um, if not focusing on particular skills, um, looking at developing the student as a whole, Something as simple as setting aside a half hour once a month to sit down and talk to the student on a one-on-one -on -one basis about their progress, their abilities, um, would give you the opportunity to perhaps better tie in the duties that student is performing with their long-term goals. And of course, the benefit being students who are working towards their longer-term goals in the position are of course more motivated, um, they exude more energy, they get more growth out of it, which in turn results in better quality and, and more work potentially being performed uh, in the position. Um, there's also opportunities to include students in meetings, um, either within your work group, office, team, lab, with external stakeholders who are giving feedback on larger operations, or, or even in planning meetings looking at sort of the future operations uh, of your group so that students can see the larger picture and how they fit into that and, and potentially see the uh, the skills, the, the knowledge, the abilities that are required and motivate them to develop those. Um, and of course there is even job shadowing. If the, the student is interested in say the position that you as a supervisor hold, um, as part of their duties allowing them to follow you and the, uh, the activities that you perform on a daily basis to see how that's done. Um, can help them understand better how their work affects your work and provide them with some perspectives on what skills uh, and abilities they need to be working on. Um, you can also look at these developmental pieces in, in sort of two phases, both internal to the office, the organization, to the student, and then external involving people outside of, of you and the student. On the internal group, um, there's a number of different methods um, tools that you can use that, that boil down largely to um, helping the student see goals, performance, um, evaluations, individual development plans, simple informal feedback, uh, performance metrics. Any and all of these are great. We do, through the work study program, have an annual semesterly evaluation. Um, so it's a pre built tool that allows you to simply tie that form into these conversations, into these development plans. Um, but of course, you are more than welcome to use additional tools and resources that you feel are appropriate for, for you, for the student, for your relationship. Um, and then as sort of a tie into that, um, as you're setting these goals, as you're providing feedback, as students are meeting, exceeding their plans, recognizing these accomplishments and achievements can be a great development booster, uh, showing the student that not only is it important that I build these skills for me, but in doing so, I've contributed 
and that is an appreciated uh, uh, bit of growth. Um, there's also sort of the external development component um, rather than just focusing on the student and their growth within the workspace looking at the students growth maybe outside the lab outside the office um, outside of the track field rec center wherever you and the student are working together so there's the opportunity for networking um, with individuals with organizations providing students exposure to these larger groups uh, conferences especially if they're at UNC we have a number of students who are planning um, or helping to present these conferences that can easily be tied into these opportunities um, meeting people attending talks uh, learning the the larger pieces of the field that they're involved in um, of course there's always the opportunity to present uh, in person online have the students talk about what they've learned or or their work components um, maybe even as part of one of these conferences and of course there are uh, non-job opportunities that you could offer the students so things that aren't necessarily part of their job duties things that aren't going to be um, a part of their required work uh, but that you have knowledge of that the student could benefit of that you might recommend um, certain <clears throat> journals publications meetings societies um, any any way that you can link the student to larger bodies of knowledge that can help them grow as as a person which in turn helps them grow as a professional which again leads to this upward development spiral uh, and this list is is largely composed of concepts that we've got from supervisors and students in speaking to them um, one of the very common issues that we see uh, on the annual work study survey especially in the first year that we were collecting information um, was that students often said there isn't enough meaningful work for me at my position either the students simply didn't have enough work or what they were doing was um, trivial and, and as a result they were demotivated they weren't learning anything they weren't progressing and they weren't able to in turn offer those higher level learning skills uh, abilities because they were doing the same sort of thing day in and day out um, or again simply they ran through everything they had so we came up with a list of projects that students could participate in and a way for you as a manager to perhaps distribute that work that could improve that situation um, I'm certainly not going to sit here and read the list of projects to you um, but the concept being these are all things that offices departments uh, sites labs at UNC have done and given students as projects that most of the time don't actually have an endpoint so they're, they're normally ongoing um, for example there's a grant writing line in here um, those of you involved in the research side of the work study program know that grants never really stop you always have to keep looking for for funding um, so tying the student into that process helping them learn how to write part of the application um, or perhaps looking at something sort of uh, related but different the researching and benchmark operations um, seeing how to uh, how does your workspace your participants your functionality measure up to others in the same area um, these projects never really end there's always an opportunity to gather more resources to improve to learn more um, solicit more feedback get better information and so if you're running out of things that you feel the students are, are capable of or there's simply not enough work to your mind um, consider looking at this list and maybe tasking your students with one or more of these projects on the work distribution side um, some simple concepts that our work study supervisors have reported uh, do lead to this upward development spiral is considering their delegation strategy um, sometimes the lack of work or higher level work on the students part is more you as a supervisor in this case from the people who have suggested it um, simply learning to let go of some of these projects to invest in providing a little bit of training and instruction and allowing students to take on larger chunks um, there's also pieces that you can hand off to students that you can distribute differently as managers perhaps just the initial step of larger projects or um, the project that you think a student can do plus something that you think might be just out of reach for them to try and expand their skill sets um, and of course very successful strategy in here is tying the students work to one of two things either their goals 
um, professionally, personally, academically, things students want to achieve, showing the linkage between their current duties and those areas uh, is a tremendous motivator for students and does help them see the value of the position, how to build their skills. And of course, um, tying their performance into advancement, uh, higher wages, higher level abilities, which uh, higher level positions, which we will talk about that towards the end of this presentation. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that UNC as an institution has a large focus on mentoring as a means of developing students, both on uh, the work study side, but especially on the professional employee side. Um, the blocks you can see in front of you are taken from UNC Human Resources Mentoring Services, uh, which is a part of human resources, obviously, that focuses on how to create uh, meaningful developmental mentoring relationships. You can simply Google UNC HR mentoring to find this information. Um, in short, mentoring is a process in which two people come together and transfer knowledge. Um, it is a tremendously variable process. It takes place within all levels, but the concept is one person has a knowledge, ability, a skill, and, and tries to transfer that to a student, which is very apropos for our discussion today. Um, there are several benefits, of course, you know, uh, increasing the competency level, this upward development spiral that we've talked about, um, increasing the talent of your employees, accelerating leaderships. Um, and I'm sure you can think of more beyond this list, but here's the takeaway. Mentoring leads to better employees. Uh, those employees are able to do more work, better work, which can offload some of your work as a supervisor and again lead to this upward development spiral which is what we'd like to see as it benefits everyone involved with the program. So a few short recommendations other than visiting UNCHR's mentoring page. Um, if you're interested in mentoring, um, offer mentoring. Don't require it. Obviously the, the student may or, or may not be a good fit for you and you for them. Um, it may not be a great opportunity in terms of timing, um, so always offer, but don't necessarily require students to participate. Um, talk about the goals and expectations of your relationship and establish communication guidelines, especially if your mentoring relationship is going to extend beyond the bounds of the work-study program. Um, evaluation, talk about the areas of improvement and have a system in place for measuring those. Again, our annual, or excuse me, our semesterly survey is a, or, pardon me, our semesterly evaluation form is a great way to survey those skills and communicate that information. Um, it also allows you to provide that feedback regularly as part of the work study program that's required. Um, and we would encourage you to think about goal progress and set goals with students that are time-based. And most encouragingly, uh, most importantly, if you're gonna be a part of a mentoring program or a mentoring relationship, be encouraging and have fun. Sometimes, sometimes students just need a little push um, to, to get to that next level and, and certainly you can be that. Um, if you think mentoring sounds a bit more involved for you or not involved enough, of course there are coaching and counseling approaches which the Human Resources Department here does wonderful workshops on defining, um, enacting, allowing you to uh, pursue those. In brief, if you think of mentoring as a back and forth relationship, imparting skills, providing feedback, um, coaching is more uh, directional where you as the supervisor are imparting knowledge and the student is uh, responsible for learning and taking that knowledge on. And of course counseling is sort of the other way. The student is providing you with lots of feedback and you're providing uh, a little um, direction, um, but it's more of a relationship from the student to you than from you to them. Um, of course, the ultimate goal of all this is to better our students and as recognition for that, there is always the opportunity for those students to take their new skills and abilities um, and move into a higher level position. Now, I, I would like to say in terms of promoting students, uh, because of the federal dollars involved, there are quite a number of regulations from the federal side and then a few from the UNC side um, that provide structure. It, it's not possible to simply promote a student just based on uh, your feelings uh, or, or your perceptions of the student's growth. Um, you might remember from the earlier speeches, we have four wage tiers, and those wage tiers are based on the duties, um, knowledge, skills, abilities, and factors of the position. Um, experience is a factor, but not 
a sole factor on which movement to a new wage tier can be completed. So um, if a student is going to be promoted into a new position, into a higher wage, that really needs to look at the, uh, uh, or excuse me, the, the change needs to be focused on what duties, what requirements, what knowledge are the students now capable of, um, what new things are they performing that they weren't necessarily performing before. If the student is indeed capable of taking on more, they're ready to move to the next level, um, we can do that. Most commonly, it, movement or promotion happens in between the fall and spring terms or between academic years. Um, and here's a simple process that we recommend you go to uh, or go through in order to make that happen. First, meet with the student to evaluate the performance uh, and discuss the opportunity with them. One, uh, if the student's performance has not been great, you may need to think a little more heavily uh, about whether or not you would like to promote that student. And quite frankly, just because you're ready for the student to move on to something bigger and better, um, students aren't always ready for that. They may feel that they need more time in the current position or they're not able to uh, commit to an additional outlay of time and energy that, that you would hope for in this new position. Um, if the student's performance indicates that they're ready to promote them or they're ready to be promoted, if you believe that you're ready to promote them, um, the student is on board with the concept, the next step is to create a new position for the term in question. Uh, as of the time recording this, we are towards the end of the fall semester. So it would be creating a position for a new term. Um, as you're well aware, we, we do have deadlines after which we can't create new positions within certain academic terms. Um, so please be mindful of those when you're having these discussions as it may be the next academic term before the student can be promoted. Um, third step is quite simply have the student log in a job X and apply to the new position. They can do this while still uh, enrolled in their current position. Um, step four is to terminate the current position so that they are free to take a new job. Um, you can always just email work-study at unc.edu and we can send you a termination form. Um, or you will find that there's a training about termination uh, on the supervisor resources page. Five, the, the new step is to hire the student into your new position. Again, this is in the JobX system under which work-study positions are based. Um, this is not necessarily in Connect Carolina. Um, that happens in step six where you notify your HR officer or shared services center, depending on your logistical setup, um, that the student has been promoted and needs to make certain adjustments to their record in Connect Carolina. Usually either the, uh, the, the update of a pay amount um, and or the change of a student's end date of employment. Um, and then the last thing is you always wanna follow up with a student, complete the cycle of outlining what's changed in their duties and expectations, what new standards do they need to reach, uh, what new goals should they be searching for. Um, and as a quick reminder, if you are promoting a student within the same year, you do not need to complete new I-9s, tax withholding forms, direct deposit forms. Uh, there is no effective break in employment in this case, um, so the student does not have to go through that paperwork again. All right, thank you so much for sticking with me. I'm Josh Leonard, and along with Thomas Harper, we are the Work Study Program staff. Um, you can always reach us at work-study at unc.edu, and you can find this resource and many, many others on the UNC Work Study Program, either by using the website in front of you, um, or simply Google UNC Work Study to reach our site, which we call JobX. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.